And now, our feature presentation. Hi, this is Phil McHale, and I star in the next Operation Primetime show, The Girl, the Gold Watch, and Dynamite, a rollicking comedy adventure. <laughs> Starring with me are Lee Purcell. Oh, just give me a chance to prove it. Larry Linbo. Uh, hey, Ted, I'll be back in an hour. Oh, make that two hours. Burton Gilliam. Good day, good day, good day, good day. <laughs> Tom Poston. <laughs> Carol Lawrence. I must confess, I hate just waiting here. Jack Elam. <laughs> Zora Lampert. Gary Lockwood. <laughs> you studying to be a chiropractor? Lyle Alzado. Nobody busts up my joint. Jerry Mathers. She assaulted me. Nobody assaulted me, not with my own knife stick. Morgan Fairchild. It's all done by remote control, Andy. All I have to do is push this little button. And Gene Berry. Next, on this station. your outfit finally. <laughs> well, it's just a little rehearsal, Kirby. Besides, you're not supposed to see me in my wedding dress until tomorrow. It's bad luck. Weddings always make me cry. Oh, Will, my guy. <laughs> oh. Bonnie, I'm sorry. I, I just didn't see it. Oh, Kirby, when you know I love you, but I swear you got two left hands. I know. It makes it real tough to see you. This China's a wedding present, Kirby. It was a 40-piece set. Now it's only 39. Bonnie, I know how to add. You know how to subtract pretty well, too. Boy, if you ain't the biggest clart sometimes. Clarts? Clarts? Yes. She means clutz. Where did you learn that word? Probably from watching you. <laughs> now, Bonnie, you listen to me. Now, this is the part where we kiss and make up, and I hope you get used to this pattern because I intend to make it the entire basis of our marriage. Don't. <laughs> Mr. 
Ritter. This just came for you. Thank you, Michelle. Sure. Bonnie loved that outfit. Kind of a combination between Mademoiselle and Sports Illustrated. Wow. What is it, Sugar? It's a letter from Uncle Omar. <gasps> what? <laughs> Where's it say? I don't know. All I can make out is the date. I never could read his writing. I can. I was always the one that could read his writing. May I? Oh, my goodness. My dear nephew, I'm sure that by now you have learned the gold watch has the power to stop time. You've well, probably also discovered, discovered that this period of does. timelessness only lasts for a maximum of 20 minutes. My invention has been programmed with the following safeguards. One, it can only be used six times in any 24-hour interval. And two, it must be activated at least once every 14 days or it will automatically fuse within itself and be rendered forever useless. The little view, Master, is, of course, a necessary distraction. <laughs> Kirby, the man who owns the watch inherits a burden of responsibility such as the world has never known. Now you know why I went to such lengths to shape your mind and character, why I so carefully prepared you for your inheritance and revelation. My last wish is that you never use the watch frivolously, but only in times of absolute need. Enjoy your inheritance, Kirby. Do worthwhile things with it. As always, your Uncle Omar. <laughs> Tempus unum hominem manet. Time waits for one man. Thank you, Uncle Omar. Hey, Kirby, talk at you for a minute. Hi, Bonnie Lee. How you doing, Bernie? Hi, Bernie. Miss Barnum. Oh, I wish you'd call me Wilma, now that we all work together. Yes, ma'am. Love that suit. Hoover, what is it? Uh, I got the band for the wedding. Sixteen pieces. Sixteen? Hoover, I can't afford that many. Oh, come on, Curb, man. You're the president of OK Devices. The OK standing for Omar Cripps. And hey, everybody knows that he's worth at least $200 million. Yeah, but all he got out of it was the gold watch and a small trust fund. Hey, now that's another thing. Here I am, an officer in this company, and I don't even know what we do. Well, we, um, we help people, offer assistance, but only if they deserve it. You know how there are some people that really need help, and then there are others, they just use you and they exploit you and they try to get what they can out of you. So we try to separate the deserving from the greedy. And the deserving is the one who gets money. But we don't have much money to give, Hoover. Okay, I'll make it a 12-piece band. Hoover, it's checkout time. Okay, Curb. Boy, he's an unusual man. Hey, Michelle, how you doing, little Hi, lady? Hi, we're fine. Bonnie, this just came for you. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I'll get us more congratulations. Mm. Oh, no. Oh. It's from Mama. She's been forced off the farm and Daddy may be going to jail. Oh, the timing is awful. I'm beginning to think that somebody that doesn't want us to get married. Can I relate to that? Bonnie is going to be all right. We'll just push the wedding back a little bit. Right now, it's more important for us to be in Sacramento. Oh, thank you, Kirby. Why don't you two go pack? I'll call the airport and uh, I'll keep everything on hold while you're gone. Where'd you get everything? Hey, come on, Kirby. You lived in my hotel too long not to know that I'm alive. Got the baggage downstairs, got the tickets, got the car, got the hotel reservations. Traveler's checks. Forgot the traveler's checks. Well, don't worry, we'll stop at the bank on the way to the airport. Kirby, didn't you no. get them? Oh, I thought you had the gold watch. I thought you did. Thank you, Wilma. Thanks a lot. Boy, Wilma, I don't know what I'd do without you. You more interested to know what you do with me? Strange, broad. Hey, Kurt, this old pocket watch means a lot to you, huh? Never leave home without it. Well, what's this little duty you here on the end? Oh, take a peek, Hoover. We ought to be going to the bank with a moving bank. Hoover, try to understand I'm not rich, okay? It's just a small withdrawal. Fine, fine. You want me to help you carry it out? Hoover. Good. Uh oh, hi, Miss Bowman. 
Beaumont. Mr. Winters. Hello, Ed. How is everything? How oh, you? never better. Well, you notice anything different? Oh, the new uniform. Oh, oh look terrific. Thank you, Miss Beaumont. <laughs> All right, everybody. Three, did you know? Shut up, up and you won't get hurt. Come on, back. Come, fill them up. Move. Better do something quick or we'll miss the plane. I'm working on it. Hey, get your hand away from it. Gun control. I certainly wish it were this easy. Oh, it's all right, everybody. I got him covered. You were just too quick for him, Ed. Just too darn quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Winters. All right, you guys. Come on now. Move. Off this way. Sacramento? No, Sugar. This is Auburn County. The capital is about, oh, 12 miles back that way. Oh. Hey, Kurt. That right there gives me another great idea for OK devices. Booze and rubber bottles. It'll make you richer than you already are. Hoover, for the last time, I am not rich. Oh, sure, sure. Neither was hired Hughes. Uh, just think about it, Curb. Booze and rubber bottles. It's a great idea. Just think of all the booze you'd save, not to mention the split heads. Man, this could revolutionize the whole industry. Hoover, let's get the bags. <sighs> Hoover, another thing. Please don't ever rent such an expensive car again, okay? Hey, come on, Curb. This thing ain't nothing but a toy to somebody like you. Besides that, it's either this or one of them old foreign imports. You know how I feel about them things. Oh, of course. How can I be so unpatriotic? I mean, I am sure that Mr. Iacocca and the entire city of Detroit are very grateful to you. <laughs> you better know it. We ain't gonna be pushed around no more. I'm looking for my mother. Her name is Beaumont, Sarah Ann Beaumont. Is she registered? Good. Uh, is she in her room now? Well, do you happen to know where I might find her? Could you direct me there? Well, it was really nice talking to you. By the terrible flooding. 
Red Cross officials helicoptered in bedding and food to those trapped and unable to reach Sacramento. And now we're told the Auburn levee is going to break away just as these pictures show the Leighton levee giving way four years ago. Mama? Honey, oh, honey. Aunt Kevin, you're here. I'm so glad to see you. How long since I've seen each other? Must be at least a couple of years. Mama, I want you to come over here to meet Mike Kirby. How do you do, Mrs. Beaumont? You call me Mama and say hello with a little feeling. <laughs> and this is Hoover. He works with us. How you doing, Hoover? Hi, Mama. Hey, you one heck of a hugger, ain't you? Oh. Now, Mama, come sit down. I want you to tell us everything. Yeah. We're here to help if we can. Well, yesterday morning, the county engineer came around telling everybody the levee wasn't safe. The levee? Said we'd have to vacate. I said I'd go, but you know how stubborn your daddy is. He wasn't about to budge. Just crossed his arms and sat there. No, sir, he said, not off of my land. Only way you're going to get me off of my property is by burying me in it. Oh, that sounds like daddy. And Sheriff Baker, you remember him? Mm -hmm. Well, he's heading over there tomorrow morning. If your daddy won't leave, Sheriff's going to take him by force. Oh. We got to get out there, Curb, see if we can talk some sense into him. Mama, I don't understand about the levee. It's always been strong. When I was a little girl, I spent half my life playing there. Engineer thinks maybe Earth moved underneath it. He said there's just too much pressure on it now. He said, oh, Bonnie, honey, he said it could go at any time. Now, that's it. We're going to get out there and get him. Uh, Mrs. Beaumont, exactly how dangerous is it? That levee breaks. It's a 10-foot wall of water coming right behind it. It'll take everything in its path. And that'd be including our place. Ten foot One zero. Yeah. Honey, I think Hoover is right. We better get on out there. No. Now, Mama, don't try to stop me. We're going. Just like her daddy. Stubborn. Let's check out time, Hoover. Oh. Uh, 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 here, here you go, Curb. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go take the bags upstairs and make sure everything's copacetic. Mama, we'll be back as quick as we can. I love you. Maybe you'll be careful. Your daddy's had his fill of being bothered. I expect he's not in a real good humor. What's daddy like when he's not in a real good humor? I missed in 30 years. Daddy, don't shoot! Bonnie! <laughs> oh, buddy! Oh, oh! Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Well, we tried to lose those but we couldn't get through. Well, that's because I ripped the damn phone out of the wall. I didn't want the sheriff calling and telling me what to do. Oh, well, Who's the young fellow? Mike Kirby! Mike Kirby, the one I wrote you about. How do you do, Mr. Oh, oh, oh. Daddy. Oh, how do you do, son? I hope you'll accept my apologies for the greeting I gave you back there. Of course, and, and I'm sorry about your mailbox. Oh, don't worry about it. We don't get nothing but junk mail anyway in Sarah's damn TV guide. Well, let's get in out of this wind. <laughs> so this is the young fellow you're going to marry, huh? Mm, he's the one, Daddy. Damn near made you a widow before you got married. <laughs> to come all the way out here and take care of things myself. Daddy, you... That's the way it is. I'm here to stay. No sheriff and no court order getting me out. 
Jug's empty. Well, maybe we ought to refill it, huh? Yes, sir. What kind of whiskey is that? Ain't no kind, son. I'll make it myself. Never drink anything with a label on it. You better take it easy on that, son. It has a way of sneaking up on you. Oh, I'm fine. It's sure it's a pretty place you got here. Richest soil in the state. You know, my family's been farming this land ever since we come from Oklahoma in 34. Of course, we're just picking fruit then, like everybody else around here. Now we finally own it. After 45 years, we finally own it, and somebody's trying to take it away. Who is? Some land agency out there over in Sacramento. Something going on, son, I'll tell you. Something big. I can feel it right down to the bottom of my spine. Dinner's ready. Well, we better go to dinner. Come on. Uh, Mr. Beaumont, my job is investigative research, and I'm pretty good at it. I'd like to help. No, I'd appreciate that, son. I'd like that very much. Good. Now that we're sorting this together, I was wondering if I could ask a favor. You name it. Could you give me a hand? My legs don't seem to work very well. <laughs> yeah, well, don't you worry about it. It won't last long. I'll fix up the soil before you sleep on after dinner. You just need a little rest. At least you didn't go blind like I did the first time. Kept walking into walls till we went away. Oh, but these flowers are such a nice gesture. I am very touched. Oh, it's my pleasure, pretty lady. I know that you've been worried a whole lot lately, and, well, this is just kind of my way of saying that you ain't alone in this thing. We're all here to help. I appreciate that more than I can say. I must confess I hate just waiting here while Seth and Bonnie Lee and that sweet Kirby are so near danger. I won't sleep a wink tonight. Not to worry, Mama Beaumont. I got just the thing. It don't never fail to put me to sleep just like that. Oh, I'm not going to take any pills, Humphrey, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, no, no, ma'am. This works twice as fast as pills. Honest? What is it? Tom Snyder, you watch his show for three minutes, it puts you out like a light. That's not nice, Henry. Hoover. Hoover. thinking about is Poseidon Adventure. Uh, just close your eyes and concentrate. Close your good. Oh my God, it's broken. Oh, God, don't do that again. It's just Daddy flushing the toilet, that's all. I'm sorry, Bonnie. You, you must think I'm a coward. No, you're not a coward. You're just a little bit edgy, that's all. Ooh. 
hands are so cold. <clears throat> Just like what they were the first time, remember? Yes, I remember. Okay. Why don't you just lie down and go to sleep? I'll understand. I won't get mad or anything, I promise. Oh, look, Bonnie. Huh? I've decided to adhere to your philosophical precepts. Oh, good. Oh, you mean... Mm -hmm. hmm. See there? I knew I could make you forget all them practical considerations. Oh, you have. I just hope this couch can float. Enough, Sheriff. All right, Seth. All right, move on out. Come on, Seth. I wanted this to be between us. You're going to force me to call in all kinds of help. Well, you do whatever you think you got to do. In the meantime, there's your car and there's the road. This is no good, Daddy. He'll just come back with an army. Bonnie Lee? Is that you? That's who it is, Sheriff Baker. I can't believe it. You're, you're all grown up. All this ain't no time for chit-chatting. Now, you just move out of here. No, Daddy, I can't let you. Besides, the gun's empty. Empty? This morning, before you got up. Why? Because I can't let you get into more trouble than you already are. Martin. Where are you taking him? I'm going to take him to jail. It's safer. Besides, it's good for the stubborn old coot. I'm sorry, Daddy. It's only for a little while. I don't believe you, Bonnie. My own daughter, I ain't even seen you in two years. Young fella, you better think about it. You see what you're getting yourself into there. Bonnie, you did the right thing. That was very smart to unload the gun. I told you, I never lie unless I'm protecting someone. I just hope Daddy forgives me. When this is all settled, he will. Don't worry. In the meantime, you better get out of here before the tide comes in. Hey, aren't you coming with me? No, your dad wants me to check out a few things. Oh, I'll miss you. Though. I'll miss you too. Mm -hmm. See you later. Bonnie Lee Beaumont. <gasps> Stella. I want you to meet my fiance. Come over here. No, you're kidding. No. I'm getting married. Stella, this is Kirby Winter. Stella Walker. How do you do? Hi there, fiance. Well, I'm so happy for both of you. Stella and I went all through school together. She was our homecoming queen. I can understand that. Well, thank you. You know, I am really happy for both of you. Kirby, Bonnie Lee is a wonderful girl. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, I should be going now. Oh, Stella, let's all have dinner tonight. Oh, I'd love to. You know, we have got a lot of catching up to do. Oh. And I want to hear all about Kirby. <laughs> uh, yes, well. <clears throat> <laughs> I, uh, I'm not too familiar with the car. <laughs> now, you be careful, honey. Uh -huh. Bye. Finally, he is darling, really. He is just darling. Yeah, I kind of think so, too. <laughs> oh, oh, so isn't it awful about the levy? I just can't believe it. Oh, I know. You know, I'm on my way to my insurance agent's office right now. Uh, Want to come along? Sure. <laughs> they won't come back to the hotel. I never thought I'd see you in here. It ain't nice, is it? It sure isn't. No. Sure gets dirty. Man, did you ever spend any time in one of these things? No. You get to washing that thing over there. I was thinking maybe... Maybe you'd let me run up to Harry's and get a little beard trim, a little hair trim, and get a bath. Seth, you know I can't do that. Baker, never know. You never... I'd never... I'd know. <laughs> we're, we've been friends, you know. For... We've been friends, but we're not that good friends. I bet you maybe uh, I could talk nice to Bonnie about you. Think you could? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Think about it. You need it now. No. <laughs> Whatever became of, uh, of, of Henry Thomas? Well, just about everybody who Dell got married moved away, except for Henry Thomas. He got divorced to move back. Henry Thomas got married? Mm -hmm. Who would marry him? Well, nobody for very long. It only lasted nine days. Nine days? That's eight days longer than I would expect. What's old Lauren Billing doing now? <laughs> He's our new deputy sheriff. Well, I'll tell you, Henry Thomas, the man sure gets weary sitting around here. You got a checkerboard? Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. I got an idea. You ever hear of Liar's Poker? Well, I heard of it, but uh, I don't know how to play. Got any one dollar bills on you? Yeah, sure. Wait a minute. Isn't this gambling? Oh, no. Believe me, son, it won't be gambling. Perfectly all right. Now, how many you got there? About eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let me have you right there. Wait a minute, why do you want my money? I'm locked in. Where am I going to go for crying out loud? I'm going to show you how to play liar's poker. <laughs> Take a look at the levee down there. Is that going to be possible? Sorry, too dangerous. Could go any time, just like Mount St. Helens. Oh. Well, could you tell me what's wrong with it exactly? You'd have to ask the engineer of that one. His name's uh, Rains, Wesley Rains. And, and where could I find him? Back up the road, about four miles. He's working out of his van down by the reclamation project. The levee's safe down there. Oh, well, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Mr. Uh... Winner. Kirby Winner. I say I got a pair of deuces. Well, I say I've got four nines. You never played this before. <laughs> Five nines? Six nines. <clears throat> Seven nines? I think you're lying. You never played this before. How many you got? One. <clears throat> well, you won that one, all right. Let's try again. My hotel down in San Diego, it had everything, including big old doors, this one. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, I hope so. Where can I find Mrs. Beaumont? Hope I didn't mess his time. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, and the lobby. Oh, you should have seen that lobby. The most beautiful lobby in all of San Diego, three years running. 19, 18, 19, 19, and 19, and 20. Oh, that thing was beautiful. And I tell you what else I was gonna do. I was gonna redo the bar, too. I was gonna stock that thing plumb full of rubber booze bottles. Yeah, rubber booze bottles. That's the thing, the coming thing, anyway. You know, could be that's what this here place needs, rubber booze bottles. Yeah. Please, Mr. Stovall, I... But half a loaf is better than no loaf at all, Mrs. Beaumont. Have your husband look these over. We're offering you money. Cash money for your property. Everyone else is doing it. Yes, but I can't make that kind of decision. Oh, but you must. Time is running out. Can't you understand that? I know, I know. It's the truth. <laughs> oh, Stella, this is Hoover. Hello, Hoover. Oh, holy... Uh, I, I mean, howdy, ma'am. Hi. Hoover, who is that talking to Mama? Oh, it's some land developer. I think he's trying to get her to sell. He's being a little bit pushy about it. I wish Zeth was here. 
But Mrs. Beaumont, he is not here. No, but I am. And who are you, little girl? I am her little girl, and she doesn't want to talk to you anymore. I think we should let her decide that. It's okay, Bonnie. I can handle this. It's, it's just a matter of knowing how to talk to folks. Okay, buddy. Hold all your freight. Any moment you delay... Hey, are you well, hard of hearing? It's checkout time, and I told you to move. You, uh, want me to move. You got it. Oh, oh, no! Oh, oh. There must be some way to talk to these farmers. Are you all right? Oh, oh. I'll never forgive myself if he hurt you. Oh, not to worry, Miss B. Oh, I've broken four fists for this old jaw, and you can shake a stick at it. Oh. That was a brave thing you did. Think so? Mm. Oh, of course, Hoover. We all think so. You mean that? Yeah. Well, is he gone? Oh, he's long gone. Oh, well. It's just like I told you. Just knowing how to talk to folks. <laughs> oh. You can't park that thing here. This is county property. Excuse me, but I'm Kirby Winter, uh -huh. and I'm looking for the engineer. Now, the guard up the road told me that I could find him here. Yeah, well, that's me. Rains. <laughs> well, how do you do? It, it's about the levee situation. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't there something that can be done? I mean, is it as hopeless as it seems? I mean, isn't there some kind of machinery or something you could no, fix so you it? you don't understand, Mr. Winter. I mean, any attempt to get close with heavy machinery would only hasten the breakdown of the levee. You're sure? Yeah, it's only a matter of time as it is. The terrible thing for those poor farmers, their land will be almost worthless. Mr. Raines, that's another thing that bothers me. Why would a realty company want to buy that property? I don't know. But uh, perhaps you could ask Mr. Stovall. Stovall? And Andrew Stovall. He's one of the biggest uh, land developers in the state. Well, thank you much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, listen, if I come back, do I have to wear one of those hard hats? Uh, no, that's just a habit. You see, Mr. Winter, our land organization is national. We have offices in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Now, that doesn't mean that we're so big that we're not sympathetic to the plight of the poor farmer here in the Delta area. Have any farmers actually accepted your offer? Oh, yes. Some of them will sell, but the point is they should. Now, once that levy goes, they won't get 50 cents an acre for their land. Would you mind telling me what your connection is with all this. <laughs> Seth Beaumont is about to become my father-in-law. Oh, I see. Well, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure you could be helpful. Well, of course, but... but how? Well, Beaumont is looked upon as a leader by the farmers up here. If we get him to move, I'm sure the others would follow. Well, he did make a move, and now he's in jail. Yes, I know, and I'm so sorry. Now, if you can get to him in time, it might change things around. Well, I'll talk to him. Maybe I can help. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Sorry. Uh, one other thing, Mr. Stovall. What exactly is your organization going to do with the property? Oh, well, we're going to drain it. And then possibly develop some condominiums, maybe a shopping center. We must be very responsive to the needs of the community. The fortunate must help the less fortunate. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much for your time and trouble. You will talk to Beaumont, won't you? Time is running out. Do 
you. I've been missing you something terrible. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to see a couple of guys. A man named Rains and a man named Stovall. Stovall? Uh-huh. Andrew Stovall? Yeah, you know him. Oh, just enough to want to take a ball bat to him. Why? He knocked poor old Hoover on his wallet a little while ago. What? Well, why? Well, Stover got real insistent that Mama should sell the farm, so Hoover stepped in and got stepped on. <laughs> if that boy could dish it out like he could take it, we'd have a world champion on our hands. I don't know. When I was when I was leaving Stovall's office, I, I had the feeling that something was wrong. You know, he was he was too nice, too considerate. It bothered me. Mm. You know what? Because all he'd have to do is, is get together with Reigns. And then they'd be able to... They could... Bonnie, huh? They're in it together. I can feel it all the way down to my socks. Bonnie, where are my socks? Oh, they're over there. The rest are close. What? Oh, Bonnie, not now. Yes, sugar, right now. Uh, Bonnie, I'm tired. I'm sorry, but you've got to take your shower. Uh, shower? Oh, shower. Oh, okay. Stella's come over for an early dinner, so you better hurry up, okay? Yeah, but, but what about Rains and Stovall? We'll discuss it at dinner. May I get? <laughs> what happened? I, um, uh, stepped on your toy duck. Hey, Lee. Hey, what are the flowers for? Well, your room ain't too fancy, and I thought maybe these flowers would kind of brighten it up a little bit. Oh, that's sweet. Why don't you put them on the dresser? Okay. See you at dinner. Okay, I'll be there. And the flower a day keeps the doctor away. things right up. Oh, and if anybody comes looking for me, tell them I'm down the street at the jewelry getting this old watch fixed up. Listen to this thing. I wonder what this guy does tonight. I know you're closing, but I got an extra special favor to ask you. I mean, if you can take care of it right now, it's worth the extra 20 bucks. We're closed. 30. 40. We are closed. 50. We have just opened. <sighs> the guy drove a hard bargain. I sure feel guilty about ordering dinner here. All my Zeth is having is cream chip beef on toast. Oh, boy, good old S.O.S. <laughs> don't worry, Miss Beaumont. Jail cooking ain't as bad as it seems. Besides that, you don't have to give a tip. Oh, Harry. Hoover. Hoover. Excuse me, sorry, I'm late. Don't worry, Curb. We ain't even finished the first round yet. I just wish we could have had dinner at my house. <laughs> Why didn't we? Well, Stella's house is in the path of the levee, too. As a matter of fact, it's the closest one to it. Food is fine here. That wonderful old house. And all those paintings must be worth a fortune. Yeah. Oh, my daddy was an art collector. He traveled all over the world collecting works of art. Wow, how much is it worth? Uh, Hoover. Oh, Bunny me, that's all right. It's a, a normal question. Well, Hoover, let's see. I don't know. Daddy had the whole collection appraised just before he died. 
And I think the total value then was something in excess of $9 million. Of course, that was a long time ago. Wow. Does that mean it's worth more now? Considerably more. You know, Kirby, it was still his daddy helped us buy our land. That's right. This whole area used to be part of his farm. It was a wonderful thing Mr. Walker did, letting folks become landowners. Uh, Mr. Walker? He's passed away now. Honey, aren't you listening? What's the matter, Curb? You looked a little rattled. Oh, nothing. It's just that I can't seem to find my gold watch. Oh, don't worry. I uh, ran it down to the jewelers while you was in the shower. Hoover. Hoover. There was nothing wrong with that watch. Sounded kind of funny, sort of like uh, Hoover. Where's the jewelers? Down the street. You reckon he's mad? Oh, no, no. Uh, he just doesn't like anybody touching that watch. Uh, it was all his Uncle Omar left him in his will. I'm sure he's over there right now. The jewelers explain there's nothing wrong with that watch. It's no problem. like a burglar alarm. Yeah, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. People got burglar alarms in this little small town? A few. A hardware, pet shop, trolley stereo store, jewelers. Oh, dear. I hate to eat and run. much used to you locked up like this, can I? You mean to tell me that you broke into a jewelry store for an old turnip watch? Why? It's a long story. But right now, we gotta figure out a way to get out of here. <laughs> you found out something, didn't you? Not exactly. It's only a guess. But if I'm right, there's nothing wrong with that levy. Well, I could have told you that. Me and my daddy helped build it back in 38. Well, we gotta get out there. And we gotta get some physical proof. And then we gotta get Reigns to tell the truth. Ten minutes with the prisoners. Oh, thank you, Henry Thomas. It's Deputy Watts. Oh, yes, sir. Sure have come a long way since that crossing guard job in grade school. I'm all grown up now, Bonnie, and don't you forget it. Ten minutes with the prisoners. Okay. Make that nine minutes. You two have a visitor. Boy, he thinks he's a damn stormtrooper. Oh, did you know they're planning on holding you here indefinitely? Why? Because you've been snooping around asking a lot of questions, that's why. Could have told you this had happened to you, but I got hauled away so quick. <laughs> Think my own daughter done it to me. Hmm. I'm sorry, Daddy. It's for your own good. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Well, <laughs> what the hell? As long as you come visit this once in a while. Yeah, I won't have to. You're leaving in about two minutes. Here. Hold this. Bonnie. Bonnie, what are you going to do? Oh, I'll think of something. No jail's going to keep me from the two most important men in my life. What do you think she's going to do? I don't know. She's got quite an imagination. She once went to a Halloween party as an Ohio blue tip match. <laughs> Can you hear anything? How 
you do it? Yeah. First, I tried to sweet talk him, and he didn't fall for that. Then I tried to get him outside, and he didn't fall for that either. So funny, I just hit him over the head with his own nightstick. Hmm? His own nightstick? What an imagination. Nice shine. Vera! <laughs> oh, my miss oh, you. Oh, Are you all right? Sure. Did they feed you? Yeah, fine. Good old SOS. That not nourishing. You're all right. Good thing you broke us out today, though. Tomorrow is going to be spam. I thought you liked spam. Only the way you fix it, baby. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking of changing my name to Clyde. Clyde? Oh, Bonnie and Clyde, I get it. <laughs> Ma, welcome to the Barrel Gang, huh? <laughs> for a beer. How come it always took you six hours to drink it? Well, uh... Tell me that much. Well, you know, you, you know the thing that does. thrown in jail, so he decided he'd go fix it up. That could be fatal. Thank you, buddy. It's all set. Mamie says we can have rooms upstairs for as long as we want. Great. Time around here while maybe gets the rooms cleaned up. But no wonder it took you six hours to drink that beer. <laughs> Mom, I don't care nothing about that stuff. I just come here to talk to Mamie. Oh. Hi, Seth. devices. <sighs> Kirby, how you doing? Uh, are you having a good time? Oh, oh, yeah. Now the police are after you. <laughs> Nothing changes. Will, I need you up here right now. Get on the first plane. Have to see a guy by the name of Stovall, Andrew Stovall. Find out all you can about his operation. Now, I can be reached at 555-3131, okay? Right, thank you very much. Hi. I'm Lola. Hello. You gonna be here a while? Yes. I mean, yes, I'm sleeping upstairs. Uh-huh, I know all about that. Who with? What? Who are you sleeping with? Myself. Where are you from? Southern California. <laughs> that explains it. Just 
just like you're good and lost. Huh? Don't worry, Daddy. We've got it under control. Don't we, Sugar? Sure do. Uh, where are we? darling, while we get around back. You be careful, Daddy. Yeah. You be careful. Not now, son. Hi, Captain. Hi, guys. I'm lost. I guess I'm just dreadfully lost. How far is it to Hammond? All oh, 15 miles. Oh, <laughs> I'm just terrible direction. Maybe you could take me there, sir. <laughs> I wish I could, too. But I'm on duty. Oh. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Come on. Daddy! Oh, are you all right? Yeah. Dangle Lake, Mike. Oh. Mr. Winterwell, how about that? There's an old point sporting out for you. Come on, on your feet. Let's go. Oh, do you get the sheriff on the horn? I'm sorry. Okay. Come on, let's get it. Come on out. Take it easy. Come on, Seth. Move it. They got me when I went back to the police station looking for you. Step right down here, please. Come on, let's go. Are you all right, Homer? Yeah. You keep it sit down there. All right. Oh. All right, Seth, get down there. I'll do my own getting down. You just you get down, down there, keep boy. Your hands off. Oh. You hurt my daddy. Just be quiet, Bonnie, will you? They hurt you, Hoover? All right. Oh. Get back in here. Hey, watch it. Oh. Come on, knock it up. I just can't believe you'd do this to us after knowing my family for so long. Oh, now, Bonnie Lee. You know what's wrong to assault a police officer. To some think you escape the prisoners, don't you? And after all, that's a crime punishable by law. Honey, child, I'm the law. That's not the real reason, is it, Sheriff? Of course it ain't. Because we busted up the little party with his engineer friend and that real estate fellow. Ain't that right, Earl, huh? Ain't that right? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Seth. You see? Not the only thing I'm certain of. You're escaped criminals. You know what's going to happen when they find all of you hiding here, huh? They're going to think that, well, maybe you just got a little careless. You know, I'm kind of surprised with you, Seth. I mean, you of all people. I mean, you should know how dangerous a place like this could be, huh? I mean, it's a virtual fire trap. Now, I tell you what's going to happen. See? What's going to happen when this fuse hits that detonator and explodes that gasoline well? By then, I'll, let's see, I'll be having a beer with a boy. What am I doing? You know these things aren't good for you. Oh, uh, don't bother to yell for help, because, you see, nobody will be able to hear you. Bye now. It's all my fault you got the slam for curb. I'm sorry, pal. Hoover, it's all right. Didn't know that my old watch meant so much to you. Not now, Hoover. So I went back and saw that jeweler. Give him 50 bucks and he dropped all the charges against you. Fantastic. Now I can go to heaven with a clear conscience. Yeah, well, at least you got your watch back. You have the watch? Yeah. But where is it? Right here in my pocket. Well, can you get it over to me? Why, so you'll know what time it is when we go up and smoke. Look at that. Just don't give up. I ain't gonna give up. I just wish that dog gone fuse would. Well, if somebody don't spit, we got ten seconds. Oh. Kirby, hurry. Hurry, honey. Where is it? Fuse. 
curb the views. Take it easy, Bonnie. I'll get you out of there. Thank you, Uncle Omar. Kirby. Oh, I don't know. Two, maybe three years. You stay at my hotel down in San Diego. Why? I mean, that fusion there. Ain't no way in the world he could have got to it in time. How do you explain it? <laughs> Shoot. Kirby does stuff like this all the time. Hoover, come on. Let's go up the road and see if we can get a ride. Oh, boy. Is it your ankle, Daddy? That's all right. I'm going to be all right. Well, you lean on me. Up here. Do you know how he done that? Yeah. His idol was Harry Houdini. Maybe you hadn't ought to marry him. Maybe you ought to just go steady for a while until you see what's what. Bakers. And right now, he's a cop and we're escaped prisoners. I guess you're right. Sure was nice that old boy to give us limbs. <laughs> Seems a little bit lonely, though. You'd be lonely, too, if you hauled fertilizer all day. The reason I called you all here today is to tell you that Stovall, the sheriff, and that engineer fellow Reigns are in this together. There ain't a dang thing wrong with that levy. And if you sell your land, you're just plain crazy. Except we don't have any real proof to support our claim about the levy. I thought you was on my side. I am, but we need tangible evidence. How are you going to get it, son? Everyone's after you. I know, they, they think that we're dead, and, and that's an advantage. But in the meantime, all of you can help. Ah. By leading Stovall on. Make him think that you're going to sell. That'll give me some extra time to work out a few things. Time? Excuse me, Mr. Winter, but there's one thing we're overlooking. Could be that Sheriff Baker's involved in this in some way, but that don't mean that the levy ain't gonna go. Amos! I'm sorry, Seth, but that's how I feel. Every second we delay is one second closer to wiping us all out. Are you gonna take responsibility for that? Yes. With all the resources in my power. Yeah, that means cold, hard cash. Just about the amount we spent on World War II. Right, Kirby? We're with you, Mr. Winter. That's good. Drinks on the house. All right, baby, <laughs> yeah. I see. I just hope I don't let him down. Ah, don't worry, son, you won't. You really gonna use all your resources? Oh, absolutely. And that includes my most able associate, who is probably up here right now getting things under control. You represent Playlands Incorporated, mm -hmm. Miss... Uh... Miss Clark. Nina Clark. Yes, Mr. Stovall. Uh, my company wishes to build a huge amusement complex in this part of the country. Something to rival Six Flags or Disneyland. How large an area would you be considering? At least a thousand acres, maybe more. It's for the children, Mr. Stovall. The young as well as the old. Yes, yes, of course. And I don't mind telling you that uh, if the right location is found, costs will be only secondary. Well, I'm sure that... Because my company's funds are unlimited. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I do. Megabucks, Mr. Stovall. Megabucks. Absolutely. Would you excuse me for a few minutes? I'd like to bring this to the attention of some of my associates. Make yourself comfortable. Certainly. <laughs> Something, Miss Clark. Yeah, I'm sorry. I uh, must have dropped my contact lens. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've got it. There. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Is it all right now? Yes. Good. I'd like some time to put together some possibilities for you. Oh, yeah. Where are you staying? 
I'm staying uh, at the uh, a hotel here in town, uh, El Rancho Racket Resort. Oh, yes, it's very nice. I'll reach you there. Okay. And uh, I'm not in my room. Uh, I'll just be on the court practicing my backhand. check out a company called Playlands Incorporated. Right. And the best part of it is, Reigns doesn't know what you look like. He'll fall <laughs> right into our little trap. <laughs> so why aren't we leaving? Because we're not going anyplace in that big car. If we do, the cops will spot us and that'll be that. We are escapees, you know. Oh, that's my girl. Always thinking. <laughs> so how are we going to get there? Taxi. <laughs> Uh, city clerk's office yes <laughs> i'm looking for the names of uh, the officers of a company called round table enterprises yes there's only one listed officer uh-huh a delta dawn <laughs> i always love that song didn't you yeah who used to sing that yeah <laughs> well okay thanks very much Bye-bye. Mr. Stovo, <laughs> you followed me. <laughs> Isn't that romantic? Never driven one of these. Hope the cabbie doesn't mind. Mine? One may be sitting in the hot sun, and the next he's at Mamie's with an ice-cold beer and a $50 bill. He may never work again. Hard hat. What name are you going to give it? I'll think of something. I'm in a patriotic mood. Mr. Rain. What? Uh, well, uh, hello. Hi there. I'm Dolly. Dolly Madison. Oh, God bless America. <laughs> Mr. Oh, what can I do for you, uh, Miss Madison? Oh, call me Dolly. Oh, well, then you call me Wesley. Wesley? That's cute. <laughs> uh. Now, I'll tell you, Wesley. I have a little restaurant about 10 miles from here. And that little city engineer where I come from wants to make me pay extra money to have a foundation fit. Oh, that's terrible. I know it. Now, I'd do anything to get him to change his mind. So I was thinking... If he could talk to you, you being the big, powerful man that you are, <laughs> maybe uh, you could change his mind. I would be very thankful. You would. Oh, just give me a chance to prove it. Uh, hey, Ted, I'll be back in an hour. Oh, make that two hours, Wesley. <laughs> Ted, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I have a car, Dolly. No, 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 I insist that you bother to drive besides this back seat, so you can go and go. That's a good point. Wait, that driver. Hey, couldn't we all talk about this? No. Okay, well, in that case, uh, I want to see my lawyer. He's in Honolulu, so I could be there and back and... <laughs> Who are you? My name is Nina Clark. Why don't you drop the act? I've checked <laughs> on you. You're not registered at the hotel, and the company you supposedly work for doesn't exist. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you better check again, because we grossed over 200 million last year. What about the purse? There's nothing <laughs> in it but a few bucks, no wallet. No, gee, I must have left it at the hotel. I know you were trying to get information on my company. Now, why would you do a thing like that? When you gross over 200 million, uh, you don't give away secrets.
Oh, oh my, oh my. Oh, please. <laughs> you studying to be a chiropractor? <laughs> this is a 44 Magnum in your back. Do you feel it? Oh, yes. Now, before I get angry, you better tell me your name. My finger is on the trigger. Oh, my. And from this point, I, I just can't guarantee what's going to happen. Oh. My name is Wilma Farnham. And who do you work for, Wilma? Who do you work for, Wilma? Kirby Winter. Winter. Yes. Oh, please, sir. Why don't you remove your arm? Because you're cutting off my circulation. Thank you. Now, Wilma. Oh. Wilma? Yes, sir. When did you last talk to Winter? Earlier today. Today? Yes, sir. Today. <laughs> Where is he? I don't know. Well, ma'am. I don't. I just remember a phone number that he gave me. I think it's 555-3131. Maybe. Maybe. I've got to set up a few things. Use the phone, Andrew. Oh. Go ahead. I'm going to see, uh, I've got some business to take care of. Is this what you had in mind, miss? Oh, the very spot. I just love to watch the boats go under the bridge. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't understand. Why have we stopped? We have stopped, Mr. Reigns. Have a little chat. Winter, you're supposed to be. I know. Then who are you? I'm supposed to be dead with him. Oh. And what do you want from me? The truth. We want you to tell us all about your little land scheme. And we want you to say it all in here. Oh. Well, no. I won't do it. That's your final word? Yeah, that's right. I'm so sorry you made that choice. What's he gonna do, darling? It isn't a pretty story. <laughs> the top of the cab, that's when he gets a view. Listen, I think this is going just about far enough. Uh, that hat's not going to help you, Mr. Reigns. That's right. I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie. Like, where are you taking me? Mamie's. Mamie's? Well, that's nothing but... I don't like Mamie's. Oh, no, I love it. Oh, Lola's my favorite. I cried when she went on vacation. How do you like our new outfits, Mamie? Raise them an inch. Oh, Mamie, would you turn on the music pretty please? Let's rehearse, girl. Okay. You got it. Clean it. Don't play with it. I know. Everything that is except the most important thing. Rubber boot spots. What? Yeah. Just think all the money you'd save if somebody tried to bust up this joint. Nobody busts up my joint. Mamie, did I get any phone calls? No, not a one. Come on, Hoover. Where are we going? We gotta go find Wilma. She should have called by now. Kirby, I gotta get out of here. It's beginning to get to me. Have you seen that? One after the other all day long. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. No, you don't. A while ago, I caught Sarah doing something she called a Latin hustle. Be okay, Seth. We gotta find a woman. 
I think we just found her. You people over here against the wall. Come on, move it! Lady, up against the wall there. Oh, Earl! Uh, what are you doing? You're supposed to be in the floor. Get out of the floor there! Come on, up against the wall. Face it. Put your hands up on it. Mammy, turn off. Don't bust up my joint! Kirby, you left your watch again. Oh. Oh. Hi, Wilma. There she is, Earl. She assaulted me. Nobody assaults me, not with my own nightstick. Now, just hold on, Henry Thomas. All right, Winner, you and your group, we're going out of here. Come on, let's go. I don't think so, Sheriff. <laughs> you're telling me you're going to resist arrest? Something like that, yeah. Well, that's real foolish. I mean, a man can get himself hurt doing that. Well, that's a chance I'm just going to have to take, Sheriff. Don't bust up my joint! <laughs> see for ourselves. <laughs> Mamie! Mamie, I need to borrow your car. Sure. Mamie, you get us down from here! <laughs> Wilma, are you all right? Oh, yeah, sure. I just got abducted, uh, choked, had a gun in my back, you know, same old thing. I'm sorry. I really <laughs> should have warned you about Stovall. Oh, please. I just came to my mind, um... The name of the land company that you wanted uh, was Roundtable, Roundtable Enterprises. And uh, their one listed officer is Delta Dawn. What? What was that name? Delta Dawn. Delta Dawn. What's that flower you've got on? What is it? Delta Dawn. That was the name we had for Stella all through school. Stella? Yeah. Do you think it's a coincidence? I don't know. I think we should go find out. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Now wait for me because, oh, I don't like the competition around here. Moving up the timetable, Andy. There's just been too much nosing around since Kirby and Bonnie Lee got into town. We've got to speed up our little accident. Come be careful, will you? Andy, don't worry about it. Don't call me Andy. It's Andrew. I don't like it. Didn't seem to mind it all those nights in my bed. Well, I'm sorry about that, Stella. I'm just a little nervous. I... I'd feel better if I'd heard from Baker. And where's Reigns? I don't like it. Just relax. I can't believe you'd take this so lightly. You remember when I first came to you with this little proposition that you had to be, uh, persuaded? Now, how do you think I got Baker and Reigns to go along with it? Just my sunny smile and my, uh, big blue eyes? I thought we had something. I know you did. And I think I ought to get an Academy Award for my performance. All three of them, as a matter of fact. Now, I would just love to stand here and reminisce with you, but I do have some work to do. Where'd you put your daddy's painting? 
and all his treasure. Oh, they're certainly not in the old homestead over there. That's going to go. Got them all safely stored away right over here on the good ship Delta Dawn. When this sluice gate goes and uh, takes the levee along with it, those farmers are going to think I lost it all. That's my Stella. Yeah. Always thinking of number one. Where's the wire? It's all done by remote control, Andy. All I have to do is push this little button. Welcome to the 20th century. Thanks. But I'd feel a lot better about this if we waited for Baker to call us on your car phone. Andy, there cannot be any more waiting around. Now, these people are going to start getting suspicious if something doesn't happen pretty soon. And I'm going to be right over there on safe ground just watching it all happen. Yeah. What do you think your daddy would think about all this? Oh, he'd probably turn over in his grave. Which might just happen when all this water hits the cemetery. Now, I suggest you go ahead and get out of here, unless you have amphibian blood. You know, I always loved your sense of humor. Don't, Andy. Just not feeling all that humorous. I'll say. Baker and Reigns, why don't you tell us about Stella? I, um, I don't know what you're talking about. Bonnie, I think he needs to be convinced. Mm. Andrew Stovall, Earl Baker and I, we're all guilty of a land scheme. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the Auburn levy. I swear it. Stella's behind the whole thing. She, uh, talked us into her scheme. Who were you watching? Come on, we're gonna get Stella. She's at sluice gate number three. The little lady's gone to dynamite it, Winter. You won't make it. By the time you get through the guards, it'll be too late. Maybe you would, and uh, maybe you would. But I never did like guns anyway. Here, Wilma. How old are you, Matt? I can't tell you how much a good fight excites me. <laughs> Six. 
Poseidon. It reminds me of Convoy. Convoy? You know, the movie with Chris Christopherson and Ally McGraw? Oh, sure. And which one of us is Ally McGraw? <laughs> okay, what's the matter now? Women folks should stay behind. Oh, is that so? Yeah, it's so. And who is it got you out of jail? Well... Oh. I think that's enough, sir. Women's lip. Should have never bought you that dang TV. Come on, Don, let us down. Help, help! Come on, all of these you farmers are gonna hear from us for this. That's the funniest looking family tree I ever seen. You're not gonna leave up there, are you? Don't worry about it, Ma. Paul's only three months away. than that. I don't understand. I think I do. How much deeper, Stella? Five, ten thousand feet? What are you talking about? Oil. Wesley Rains ran the test for me. He said it's one of the richest deposits between here and Santa Barbara. Stella, I'm surprised you told us this. Even if those farmers do lose their land, they're going to be very rich. I don't think so, Kirby. Stella, you're not going to... Bonnie Lee, I can't stop. Now there's too much at stake. I'm sorry, but you two happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, we have Wesley Rain's confession on tape. Yeah, but who did he confess to? Me and Kirby. So once you're gone, there won't be anybody left to make any problems for me. Looks like I hold all the cards. So, enough of this talk. Actions do speak louder than words. This one. of a long distance runner. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowman. I appreciate that. 
But you were the one that really got the ball rolling. How's that? By standing up to them in the first place. <laughs> That's right. Question authority. I got this big sign on my wall. Gee, isn't he an interesting man? You're right. I'll tell you something else. This is the finest sipping whiskey I ever tasted. Excuse me, Kirby, that was your office in San Diego. I spoke to a policeman. He said somebody named Joseph and Charla kidnapped your secretary, Michelle. Oh. Who's Joseph and Charla? Joseph Lacoitalis and Charla O'Rourke. They're enemies of OK devices. First they're after my Uncle Omar and now me. They just keep popping up everywhere. They even kidnapped Wilma once. Twice. But who's counting? <laughs> well, I guess we better get packing. Check out time, Hoover. Kate. Why not? The legs don't work. <laughs> Come on, Uber. Oh, oh, well, I love you. You drive now. Bye, 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 Sarah! What? Where did you hear that kind of talk? Mamie's? No. Three's company. I knew I should have never bought you that TV. Uh-oh. Shaka? <laughs> of course, I know why you're so upset about leaving. Lola. Lola? You kidding? If I saw her in the street, I wouldn't even recognize her. Naturally, she'd have her clothes on. Bonnie, I talked to her exactly once. Talking isn't her specialty. I don't believe this. Curb's getting the Spanish thing down pat. I know. Arguing already. Lovers quarrel. Yeah. Uh, doesn't it fill your head with all sorts of romantic images? Starlit nights, moonlit coves, thundering surf, cozy fireplaces, <laughs> double weddings. I thought you wanted to get rid of me. Now, Kirby, this is the part where we kiss and make up. I hope you get used to it, because I intend to make it the entire basis of our marriage. Mm -hmm.